Hello everybody, welcome back. My name is Aladino and together with my wife Maya we are refitting a Cape George Cutter 36. We bought this boat uh, sight unseen in the USA about four years ago. We knew it had some big structural problems. Uh, we had to replace uh, the deck beams, open up the decks to do so, uh, switch out all the blocks, do some repair to the breast hook, the king plank, uh, basically ended up being uh, gutting the interior, rebuilding the interior, rebuilding the entire cockpit uh, from the hull. Um, but now the structural work is behind us. Uh, we are starting to focus more on systems and the goal is to splash uh, this summer in 2024. But last week we had some uh, new uh, deadlines and pressures introduced uh, by the yard. Uh, they wanted to move us now uh, from where they had previously parked us and that is because they're reorganizing the yard they had previously parked us with a lot of room behind us uh, which now they want to maximize the space uh, which means the shed has to be disassembled come down um, to allow for them to move us not having a shed anymore soon means of course that uh, we gotta speed up and finish all the exterior tasks uh, before the shed removal actually happens so today it's time to apply non-skid paint on the cabin top. There are different kinds of non-skids that one can apply. Um, of course, the most traditional one is a teak deck. Another approach is by using paints, uh, usually with uh, beads inside of it. Very old school was to grind up walnut shells or add salt or sugar. Then of course, there's just the molded gel coat. If something comes out of a mold, there is similar nice patterns uh, that can be applied in a uh, in a sheet kind of material like Threadmaster and nowadays there's many synthetic uh, options as well uh, that kind of resemble teak and there is Kiwi Grip which is again in a bit of a different category it is a one component paint you apply it with a textured roller as you will see it leaves uh, peaks as the paint uh, hardens in place uh, those peaks stay like that so yeah there's uh, many options I decided to give Kiwi Grip a try to get to know it. Um, I've never used it. I heard very good things about it. Um, and um, especially because for an ocean going boat, I wanted um, what is the best grip possible. And I've uh, seen a couple of Kiwi Grip decks, so I know that the, the holding is really excellent. Um, of course, I also like teak, uh, but yeah, we're not putting on a teak deck right now. I really like the color that they have. Um, I like that it's uh, not uh, as toxic. It's uh, for once pretty uh, simple one part paint. We are not sponsored by Kiwi Grip. Uh, this is just another one of those products that we, we need and use. So we bought it ourselves and uh, we'll tell you exactly what we think. But same goes with the other things. <laughs>
I have used this technique before. Um, I've used textured rollers uh, using gel coat um, because gel coat also uh, can uh, cure relatively quickly. Um, so it's exactly the same principle. And I had to do so when uh, you're doing a repair um, because of warranty, uh, then the boat has to be rebuilt to exactly the same specs as it was before. Older X yachts, they have uh, their non-skid pattern is uh, done exactly in the same way with a textured roller in its gel coat. So I had to do a couple of repairs, so I had to reproduce it in the same manner. Still, I'm not gonna lie, there is a tiny percent of uh, being nervous about trying a new product. And that is mostly just because um, every product behaves slightly different. Um, tolerances to temperature, uh, how they flow. Uh, what really is the best way of applying things, so there's, there's always uh, things to learn. What do you do when the words that you speak in truth fall to the ground? What do you do when you walk in for days only to turn back around? My first impressions uh, were really positive, um, really simple uh, to apply, uh, simple to work with, um, not stinky. And indeed it is good to practice on a smaller area first, which uh, well we are kind of doing um, by doing these smaller uh, parts on the cabin top. But we also learned that it's definitely good uh, if you have two persons applying it. Um, so because the tapes are the thing that uh, should be removed rather quickly if you want to get a nice edge. Uh, so yeah, two persons is uh, even nicer uh, to, to get good results.
Now, removing the tape presented uh, a bit challenging, uh, but it's also uh, my fault because uh, we put the tape down to create the pattern, then we sand it, which slightly sands the tape edges as well, um, and then it stayed on for a while, uh, which uh, it absorbs humidity, so the tape becomes a little softer and weaker, and so that became a little more of a challenge when removing it. I use um, like toothpicks or bigger ones, like skewers, so you can actually like go underneath the tape to pick it up, uh, because of course if your fingers are full of kiwi grip too, and you go to try to grab the, the, the tape, then you put paint all over. Maybe like tweezers would help, it's just like to uh, grab a corner of the tape and then peel it. Um, be very careful when um, there is two pieces of tape because you might be pulling but then the tape separates there and if you have a piece of tape falling onto the fresh kiwi grip that uh, changes the pattern of course. Um, but what I also liked is that it's pretty easy to uh, patch up um, the kiwi grip. You either pass again with the roller or even the day later uh, we had we had a cat walk on it for example but then i just um tap a little bit of kiwi grip in that area and try to make ridges so so it's it's forgiving and easy to fix um but yeah uh, the tape needs careful removal and uh just slow pulling it off slowly um and uh yeah throw it away uh try not to get onto the kiwi grip we try to work quick and that was to always try to keep a wet edge uh, to just yeah continue to work seamlessly. <laughs> I love it, it takes so much focus and uh yeah i gotta be so careful you gotta know where's my knee where's my elbow yeah where's my finger okay now apply pressure peel off the tape don't slip and scrape it all off yeah a lot of this is my kind of tai chi <laughs> hey i would say not bad for first try Absolutely. Um, let's see if this will be visible after we have all non-skid on that it, it was the first. Um, but looking at it right now, it looks super uh, consistent. It really does. Not difficult, I would say, but yeah, really practice on a small area somewhere else or really have everything prepared. Uh, we gunned it a little bit um, just with the last few gloves that we had, but it is water soluble so you can just go wash your hands but yeah that's why we're not continuing right now just because we're gonna shut down the heater soon temperature plays a role in how quickly those peaks uh, firm up um, if you let it rest in a cooler climate then they sag down a little bit which could be the result you want um, you can also put in water for a less uh, gritty texture but uh, this is an offshore boat uh, so we want it to be grippy yeah, super happy. Uh, more tomorrow. All right, day two. Uh, it looks uniform, super happy. So we're just gonna move on and do starboard and hopefully that's gonna be a success too. I also have the two uh, cockpit hatches that are ready to go. So I just um, taped those, wiped it down with the uh, total boat de-waxer and surface prep. So yeah, let's start up top though.
we are done. That went really smoothly again. I think the hardest part is removing the tapes cleanly. So Aladino did that part, but the actual application is really straightforward. It's a water-based paint. It smells pretty much just like any paint you would use inside your house. So it's really not nearly as toxic as the stuff we're used to using, all these two-part, you know, very, um, <laughs> very toxic paints. Very effective, but very toxic. Yeah, so Kiwi Grip comes in a very limited range of colors, but Aladino just informed me that you can actually take it to a regular paint shop. And because it is sort of a more standard, just water-based paint, the dyes that your regular paint shop will have can actually go and be mixed into it. So if you just buy white Kiwi Grip, you can mix, custom mix any color. I imagine there's a bit of sort of rigmarole involved in that because then you have to get it out of the plastic bags and mix it all up in another container and then however you decide to deal with it. So we just went with their cream color. So I think they have a white, they have a cream, they have a blue, which I don't know, <laughs> maybe on some very particular boats, but the blue, I don't know. It wasn't not my first choice of blue to represent the entire spectrum of blue. I wouldn't have picked that one, but that's all right. And then they have a gray. So pretty limited. I do think I need to warm up to the color. It is, I don't know, it's quite a contrast. I was sort of thinking, oh, maybe we should have just gone with the white. But I do think that once the teak accents are installed back on the boat again, I think that that will create a really nice contrast and tie it all into context. There's also something about a pure white boat that's just so much glare, not only in life, but like also on camera. And that is something that we think about given what we do, you know? Um, and I think the warmth of this color will, will be a good thing, but yeah, I don't know. I just, <laughs> it like took a while for me to get used to seeing it, I think. Um, it was quite cream at first. I do also think that the cream will hide dirt and sand a little bit better. Um, of course, it's still not a dark color, but it will be better than the white. Having pure white non-skid on Magic Carpet 1, I mean, of course, we realized like it gets dirty. I and mean, it's a surprise to no one, but it gets dirty. So you have to clean it because it's quite obvious when it gets dirty. And I think this will do a little better. And alongside the Kiwi Grip application, we also kept applying Barrier Coat. We started this procedure last episode, just applying several layers of epoxy barrier coat supplied to us from Total Boat. Thank you so much. And yeah, this is just like hull insurance, kind of. Like it just prevents osmotic blisters in the future, which really decrease the value of a boat. Um, so happy that that's going on. The one thing with barrier coat that Aladino explained to me is that once you start, you do want to keep going because if you try to apply it, I mean, I guess like with most paints, really, if you try to apply it um, after too much curing time has passed on the previous coat, then it won't adhere properly. So you would need to sand it again. So to avoid sanding, you really want to do a coat every day. Um, we did kind of run out of the paint. Uh, we didn't estimate the actual size of the boat um, properly, I think. So we needed a bit more paint than we thought. But yeah, we'll figure that out later. For now, we got three good coats on. That's good for now. And we'll probably put a bit more on later, but it will require sanding. Overall though, it is just really nice to see the bottom have this uniform color. It's very satisfying. It's always nice when the colors start to come together. Things look good. All right, it's a bit windy today now, but I'm really, really happy with the fact that we've gotten so many things done here and the exterior of the boat is quite rapidly at this point starting to be a proper exterior. Yeah, I'm really pleased. So the barrier coat on the bottom now has three coats on it. We may do some more, but um, we did exhaust our, our supplies at the moment because we ended up needing a little bit more than we had anticipated originally to do one coat. So anyway, that's that's that. But the Kiwi Grip, we're really, really happy with. I think it looks really good. And 
yeah, for a brand new product, you're always a little nervous with how it's going to go. And I think it went really, really well. So next up, Aladino has started sanding the primer that has been applied to the decks and the cockpit. And tomorrow I'm actually going to go pick up some more Epifanis 9010 paint, which we will apply to the decks and the cockpit. Really looking forward to that. And um, yeah, that's sort of the last big exterior paint job that we have to do. And then maybe by the, you know, within a few weeks, the shed will come down and some other big exciting things can happen. So things are going really well. I would say overall successful episode. The time pressure has a little bit of a fire under us, but I, I think in, in a good way, ultimately, um, it's really sometimes necessary to have a bit of a push and it's going to be nice to have all the exterior work done so that then, you know, once that's done, we're much closer to the water because the interior work can really happen on the water. We can put in like a very basic electrical system before launching just so we have the bare necessities, but like the rest of that can be built out while we're enjoying life on anchor somewhere. Um, all these little details. Yeah, it can come together, I guess, in a more beautiful setting than this kind of um, Wild West Canadian boatyard. So <laughs> I'm looking forward to that. Huge thank you for being here and for watching. We so appreciate reading your comments every week. We do read all of them, so it really brings us joy to read through them. An extra big thank you to our patrons for always going above and beyond to make sure that these episodes keep being produced. We couldn't do it without you. It's you guys that keep this totally audience funded, free from sponsors. It's amazing. It's just, it brings me so much joy to be able to say that. So thank you. That's all you. Uh, you can become a patron for as little as $2 a month. In exchange, we post real-time updates on Patreon so you know what's happening in real time. If you want to know when the launch actually happens, that's going to be on Patreon. Yeah, just really appreciate the patrons and appreciate the community over there that allows us to, to stay honest and keep doing this and be, be held into no corporations. Love it. An extra big thanks to the folks whose names are now appearing on screen for always going the extra mile to make sure that Magic Carpet keeps being produced and we will see you all as always next Friday.